Today's show is pre recorded. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all don't know y'all better act so Hat on, hat on, suit on, suit on. Looking like the tap of dawn. Giving a microphone. Stress like a million bucks. Bumming things in its cups. Y'all tell me who could it be for Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. And listening to me. Uh-huh, I sure will. Good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only, Steve Harvey. Got a radio show. <laughs> Tickling me this morning. Steve Harvey got a radio show. Filled with nothing but joy and hope about it, too. You know, it's a great thing to be able to wake up in the morning with, with peace in your heart and joy. Peace and joy is 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 immeasurable. It, it has a value attached to it, and, and I have no idea what it is. It's invaluable. It is worth so much more than than any amount of money you can make. Peace and joy. I I have not always had that. I have not always been a peaceful person, or or a person who lived his life um, in in a joyous spirit. It took an arrival at this moment. Some people arrive sooner than others. Um, I wish I had arrived at this point sooner. But I think it was necessary for me to learn a few things, too. That's, that's the amazing thing I've learned about life, is that instead of reflecting on your past uh, uh, incidences and calling them failures, instead of focusing on the negative and, and calling them bad times, uh, I look at them now as experiences. I had to have those experiences that were negative, that were good, positive, wrong, evil. I had to have all those experiences to become, to shape who we are today. We all have to have them. If you look back at all the negative experiences you've had, all the things that you called failures, all the businesses I started that went under, all of the jobs I had that I was fired from, all the shows that were canceled, all of the times I I thought I was going to get something happening my way and turned out I didn't get it at all. When you look at all of it, all of it, hopefully along the way what you have done as a person is you've taken those negatives and those failures and you've used them for what they actually are. They are experiences. And they've now created in you an experienced person. And you know, uh, that is worth something. That's Then it becomes a positive. But what too many people do is they let the negative things that have happened in their life, they allow the failures that have happened in them lives never to manifest themselves as experiences. And you sit up there and you dwell on it and you dwell on it until you have this woe is me attitude. Stop looking at it like that, y'all. 
you go through things in order to become the person that you are today. I'll tell you who you sometimes have to sit down and talk to. Sometimes you ought to sit down to an inmate that really gets it. An inmate that says, man, I've actually heard inmates say it to me and write to me. and, and, And they've said things like, man, coming to prison saved my life. Now, those of you who have never got, how can he say a thing like that? But 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 some men know, man, I was so far out there that if I'd have stayed out there, I wouldn't even be here today. This actually allowed me to stop, spend some time with myself and learn some things about me. Now, does that happen for everybody like that? No, but here's a person who has taken an experience that could be considered a failure or a negative and turning it into a positive and using it to enrich their lives. You can do it no matter what your set of circumstances is. I recommend to everybody that you try changing your outlook in order to change your outcome. Everything that happens to you that's negative or you consider a failure, they're experiences. You've got to go through these things in order to have the knowledge that you have today. So I wish that I had come to this arrival that I'm in now, this place of peace and joy. But then guess what? I would not know what I know. I could not share some of the things that I'm able to share if I had not gone through some of them. And sometimes that's the purpose of them is to teach you a lesson because, you know, God has a plan for you. He really, really does. And eventually he can use you no matter how old you are. And he can use you no matter how young you are. If you just say, okay, I'm ready to hear your plan. I've tried mine. Mine ain't worked out. What's your plan for me, God? What do you want me to do? That's why I say every day, Steve Harvey got a radio show, y'all. Because, man, I ain't see it coming. I didn't see that coming. I ain't see this book coming. I ain't seen. I ain't seen half of the amazing things that have happened to me. I didn't plan them. I was sitting there, man, asking God for some direction, and then I got smart enough to stay watchful, be a hard worker now, because faith without works is dead. And it came. And I remind you of this: God has given all of you a gift. Every last one of you listening has a gift. God has never created a soul that He did not provide a gift to. God gives everyone a gift. And a gift is not just singing, rapping, entertainment. The richer gifts are much more than that. Teachers are gifted people who really have the gift of sharing information. That's a gift. You know, um, and in that you can become great. You know, uh, a lot of people think that successful and greatness is the same thing. Cornell West said it at my daughter's graduation. He was a spokesperson. He said something so pointed. He said, don't ever confuse success with greatness. The two have nothing to do with each other. See, people determine success about money and fame and all this here. But greatness, greatness ain't got nothing to do with your money. It ain't got nothing to do with your fame. It's how you conduct your life. It's how meaningful and significant you become in your community, at your church, on your job, to the Cub Scout unit that you run, to the little girl's lives that you change, that that little center in the hood where you just one place of hope to so many people and they come back. And I used the example of Lou Danzler who passed away in L.A., who had the Boys and Girls Challenges Club out in L.A., and he wasn't a rich man at all. And if you walk by him, you wouldn't even know who he was. But if you look at all the people who have gone on to become politicians, who have gone on to become CEOs, who have gone on to become athletes that have passed through this man's small building in the hood in L.A., he was great. Trust me, man, prayer changes things. I say it all the time. But when you see people become successful or great, there's somebody praying somewhere. May not even be them. Maybe it's their mama. You know, I think of Tiger Woods and all the greatness he's accomplished. You know, they, they always talk about his father and all this here. Somebody somewhere praying for Tiger Woods. I got cash money riding on that. Tiger Woods' mom is a praying woman or something. My mother was. She prayed me into this place because she used to call me all the time praying for you, boy. And prayer changes things. It really does. Try it today. It can change you. It has changed millions of people. Open up yourself to the greatness that's in you because God has given you a gift. Now, the fact that you ain't using it, who fault you think that is? I'm just telling you you got one. And if you start praying about it, it'll manifest itself. And you can become one of two things, successful or great, or both.
you can make the decision today. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies. Oh, hold up, hold up. I remember how he used to do this. Ladies, ladies, ladies. <laughs> we got to wake how people my, up. <laughs> how my ladies doing out there? Y'all remember Tommy when he did that? Uh-huh, yes. when he was doing his Back tips, when Tommy he was tips. thoroughly convinced he was sexy. I mean, Still, it has, it has wore off third. a little bit. No, he's convinced, but yeah, not thoroughly, though. Oh, okay. It, doubt has crept in a little bit. Oh, this was wow. back when he wow. was, I'm talking about, oh, you couldn't tell him nothing. <laughs> a lot of people hadn't seen him yet because he had just got on the radio. Mm-hmm. So he wasn't famous like he is now. So what had happened was, you know, the, the doubt started sinking in over the years after people really started when they saw him live and they go, oh, okay. <laughs> That's him. That's wrong, Steve. That's what they say when they see me. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. I want you to get me wrong. Oh, they enjoy the show. They uh-huh. love his comedy. Yeah, we're great. They love that. the pranks. They love all that. It's just when they see him live. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I ain't talking about performing. I'm talking about physically. Uh-huh. When he you know, I let him down. I well, let him down you know, physically. You, you, you know, I'm, I'm talking. You know, they see the size of your hands. <laughs> oh man! They see the actual height, and they go, "Oh well, he cute." <laughs> and then you go from real sexy to cute. <laughs> okay. Hey, Jim Shirley Strawberry. <laughs> hey, good morning. Happy National Radio Day, Steve. Carla what? Pharrell. It is mm-hmm. that National Radio Day. Good morning, Junior. everyone. <laughs> morning, Unc. Morning, everybody. Nephew Tommy. Oh, ladies, ladies, <laughs> ladies, ladies. Come on, lady. Do it to you. How are my ladies doing out there? Sure. We fine, Tommy. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Today's tip is, hey, wow. you know what we ought to do? What? <laughs> We ought, to, we ought to do it today. Let's do a throwback show. Just Whoa. every now and then, let's just do a throwback bit. Let's do three of them today. Three, did, throwback three throwback bits, bits today. Mm. I'll let the ladies pick what the bits are, Tommy. Yeah, but Carla going to cut all these bits we do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, the, <laughs> I know why I said that. Carla looking at like, y'all already know. Ass. Carla going to cut every last one of these bits. No, we ain't going to be able to do nothing. No, we're, no, let's just keep it moving. Keep it No, today. I want to do, let's do no, three bits. Y'all pick the bits. We got we three bits we don't do hardly no more that's still good. Okay, Comedy we'll talk segments. about it. We'll yeah. talk about it over the break. Country Brothers was all yeah, right. Country Brothers. They ain't going to let that fly. Ralph the white guy. Oh, no. Oh, man. Can't be white. Hey, it's your, it's your brand. Yeah. <laughs> it's your brand. Dirty, Dirty old man. Dirty old man. I love Don. What yeah. about um the, the African guy? What was his name? Mumumbo. No. no. Yeah. Mumumbo. yeah, that was it. That Mumumbo. Yeah, that was right. Yeah. Um, Eugene. They ain't going to let you no, do that. No, we can't do that. A guest appearance from Eugene one time. Uh, man, we miss right. him. And they'll we'll, march we'll on us by, by tomorrow evening. It'll yeah. be a march. No, they won't, Tommy. We'll discuss it over the break, guys. Coming up at 32 minutes after the hour, <laughs> ask the CLO, the Chief Love Officer, up next, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for Ask the CLO. You can go to steveharveyfm.com to submit your question for the Chief Love Officer. Now, CLO, Clo, it's Tommy Calls You. This one is from Lee. She's an online listener. Lee says, I'm in my mid-20s, and this question is to the men, basically. I've set standards for what I want in a man, but my last boyfriend left me because he had standards, too, and I did not measure up. He was serious about me cooking for him weekly or having food at my house when he visited. I don't cook or have a desire to. I told him that he's not entitled to a cook meal from me because he's not my husband. He said I should at least try to act like I am wife material and cook. We disagreed and broke up. How important is cooking to a man in a relationship? Mm. Well, I mean, you have every right, young lady, to have your standards. And you got them. But this young man has every right to have his standards. And if he wants a woman who can cook and you can't cook, 
then you ain't it. What what's 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 the matter with that? This it's a wrap. Yeah. <laughs> This if you work. want a man that can drive and drives a car, a, a car and and he don't have a car yet, you you don't have to see him. No. If he were her husband, she would cook. No, she no. She doesn't want to cook for him because he's not my husband. Okay, that's, well, that's cool. But he got to know what he's getting into. Hello. Take you to dinner, you ain't his wife. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I you don't know, think she should have to cook if she doesn't you know, want to. Okay, hold up, hold up. So <laughs> you call me, married. we dating, and you tell me your car broke down, and I don't help you get the car fixed. You ain't my wife. I ain't no mechanic. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> I'm just saying I don't think she Drop should Drop your to own cook. damn transmission. <laughs> Dang. Well, surely you, you, you wouldn't cook for the man at all? Hell no. Shirley, Shirley don't do that now, Tommy. Is your name Shirley? Okay. No, Tommy, I wouldn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is still the same. Still the same answer. <laughs> All right, this is from Terrence in Philly, CLO. Uh, Terrence says, I'm 48 years old and I'm married to a jealous hearted, crazy woman that likes to hit me. She gets mad about the few times I cheated years ago and then she starts throwing <laughs> stuff at me or she'll punch me when I least expect it. I don't uh, think of it as abuse because it's my fault, but I'm sick of her hauling off and punching me whenever she has a flashback. She claims she has forgiven me, but I can't tell. We've been together for 17 years and I haven't cheated in the past eight years. Will she ever get over this? Probably not. Sound like wow. you gonna get sucker punched. They got to stop hitting to. though, dog. That's got that, to stop. Dog, that's not cool at all. No. no. You know, even though he did work. say he cheated several times. Yeah, but he's been good for the past eight years. They've been married for seven. Right. I made him admit but to that. Nine but, years. But he here's cheated. the deal, though. <laughs> if you are going to stay mad and married, <laughs> I wouldn't stay in a relationship. Right. So now every time you think about it, you hit the man. Mm-hmm. Okay, he did what he did. He asked for forgiveness. He straightened up. Now, if you want to keep punishing him for it, I'm not going to sit there and let you keep punishing me for the same crime. Absolutely. You took him back. So yeah. you guys have got yeah. to move on from this. Uh, yeah, man, because I'm not going to stand here and you you just hitting mm-hmm. on me whenever you want to. I'm right. I'm I'm gonna tell you right now, we're getting a divorce. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What, what's the point? You're gonna hit him. We're not going to counseling. No, you're divorced. Uh, yeah. you, done whoop, you done whooped my ass one time, two times. Right. You, you just whooped my ass. Paperwork. This ain't counseling. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need that kind of help. I need help finding me another place. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need a counselor. I need a real estate agent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the 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 abuse, the physical abuse is not good. I, I don't think women cool. should hit men, and definitely men shouldn't hit women. Exactly. Their physical might, their strength, you know. But yeah, this is wrong. All the way around. All right, Frank and Augusta CLO says, Steve, I need your help, brother. I met a beautiful sister six months ago, and we spent time together during the quarantine. I'm really feeling her, and the sex is great. My only problem is how she looks around the house. She has her natural hair and it's beautiful, but she wears super long eyelashes and a ton of makeup with drawn on eyebrows and eyeshadow for days. (laughs) I've never seen her in her natural state. I'm afraid to ask her if this is how new age dating is. I'm 51 and I wanna see the real thing. Uh, You sure you Mm -hmm. wanna see her? You sure? Mm -hmm. Mm. Something under there now. You, you did say that? you was afraid of something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid to ask her if this is how new age mm-hmm. dating is. He's she 51. might be afraid to show you. <laughs> <laughs> now, with that being said, bro, why don't you just sit it down and go, baby, look, I think you're beautiful the way you are. You don't have to do all this for me. You know, you can say that. But, but when he met her, she had on makeup and lashes. and He and ain't I, seen her hey, yet, bro. Uncle Steve. Yeah, I know. Bro, bro, let me say something to you, man. Don't push this. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. Yeah. It's, 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 Don't open this can of worms that you might not be able to close. If she went in there doing COVID, man, please, you know. When he met her, that. she had on makeup. Okay. I don't have a problem with this man wanting to see her, and I don't want to. I don't have a problem with her wearing makeup. Yeah, 
so now if you got a problem with a makeup, bro, if you don't like women that wear makeup, then you got to start seeing somebody else. Right, now he wants her to But change. if she take it off, though, you might be able to see somebody else anyway. Mm-hmm. You're going to see somebody else. It's somebody else under there. The She's you the about? same person. She just doesn't have It's somebody on. else under there. When he met her, she wore makeup, and that was fine. <laughs> yes, and he's never seen her without mm. I would I, just live with that, dog. Yeah, what is the big deal? Just take some it, women huh, Steve? like to get up and yeah. make themselves, make up up. themselves up. Yeah, uh-huh. some women like that. It's, it's, nothing, it's wrong nothing wrong. Makeup. Yeah, definitely mm-hmm. not. When they but, get up know. early before you every morning and, and, and put some more Shut on, up. refresh. <laughs> He's to be it's, 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 We hiding something. Yeah. Cool. Get something up first, dog. Under there. Well, just keep Your doing it, then. <laughs> we got to go, CLO. Hey, before Thank we you. nod off, you want me to set my uh, iPhone for you? <laughs> <laughs> Coming up next, nephew Tommy's run that prank back right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, Miss Ann will have today's national news, including speech highlights from both VP nominee uh, Kamala Harris and, of course, President Obama, as history was made at the Democratic National Convention. That makes me so happy. I'm so yes. proud. I'm so happy. Yes, Kamala Harris, you go, girl. Right now, the nephew is here. You hear him with Run That Prank Back. What you got for us, Neff? Hooking up at the daycare. Hooking up at the daycare. Let's go, cat dog. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to reach Frida. This is Frida, and who is this? You don't know me. My name is, uh, Lonnie. Lonnie. I, I, I know, I wanted to call you. I've been looking, for, trying to get your phone number, actually, for, like, about the last... About two weeks now. What do you need uh, my number for, baby? Can you get on with it? Because I, I'm on lunch break. I'm trying to hear me eat my lunch, and I need you to come on with it. Uh, okay. Now, is your um your husband is? Uh, <laughs> what is your name again? My name is Lonnie. Lonnie. Okay. okay. And you asking about my husband? Now, what about? Yes, that's my husband. See, the problem I'm I'm having, Miss uh, Frida, is that I I I looked through my wife's cell phone about two. Three weeks ago, mm-hmm. and uh, and I'd have found out that this actual phone number belonged to your husband named, and he he been text messaging her. And, stop right there! Stop! Stop! Stop right there! Wait a minute, because it, but see, th- let me finish though. He he been text messaging her different uh, text messages and stuff about he want to meet up with her and and how she looked the other day and stuff like this here. But th- uh-huh. then, but then even worse than this here. Is he, you know, done sent some 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 pictures of himself, some some naked pictures on the on the uh on 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 the cell phone. Baby, please, so, baby, 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 please, no, no, sir, not. I know not. Cause if anything, if he texting anybody, need to be an employer about a job. I, I know you're not telling me. Who, baby? Who is your wife? What's your name again? What's your name again? My name is Lonnie, and my 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 wife name is, is my wife name is Denise. Denise. <laughs> Denise, Denise, Mm-mm. that ain't registering with me. I, I, I don't. We pretty much have an open relationship where we kind of communicate, and mm-mm. I, don't, I don't know nothing about no Denise. And we okay, have, we let me ask you this. Together. I don't okay, know no Denise. do 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 your husband's last four digits on his phone is sixty eight twenty two? Yeah, that would be the last four digits. Okay, see that's what I'm saying, man. I'm not trying to call you. You know, I mean, I'm I'm disappointed in my wife because of these text messages and these pictures and stuff. You know, I'm I'm the one. I, that's why I say, okay, I need to call this man's wife right here and see what you know. Do okay, she even wait, know it? Uh, uh-uh, uh, I need you to wait a minute, back up, baby. Be quiet for a minute. Look here, okay, Denise, you're Lonnie. Okay, where they supposed to admit it? What what? I, you know, because we used to go everywhere together when we go. To, first of all, the don't work. Let's let's go there. He does not work. Uh, okay, so I don't know where it is when he got when he generally when he leaves the house we're together. So I, where did they meet? With what? How did how did they meet two weeks ago? You say because oh I'm listening to you now. You got well, my I don't opinion. I don't know if they met two weeks ago. I'm just I just found uh, him in the cell phone two weeks ago. That's what I'm saying now. You say if you saying he don't work. Then evidently it must be during the day while you gone or something. I don't do. I mean, you you say you on your lunch break right now? Yeah. Uh huh. 
And where okay. is your wife right now? Wait a minute. Where, do you know where your wife is right now? Uh, well, she's supposed to be at, at work right now. And you know what? I just called. He told me he was gonna get in the tub, and when I called back, it was taking him long. He used it. it, it uh huh. Okay. It's, yeah. Okay. Ooh, if I ain't have to go back in this hospital, baby, baby, baby. See, it, yeah. Where is your wife? I need you to get to. We need to see where your wife is. Well, see, my wife works at a uh at a, at a not, hold. Wait a minute. Do y'all have? Do y'all have kids? Hell yeah, yeah, we got kids. And that's my problem. That's why I'm so upset. I'm working all day. I get up at 4 in the morning to make sure I got everything prepared for the whole day. Got to get the kids ready. We have three kids. One, two, and three. Yeah. Okay, okay. Now, three now, he, kids. He, the, the, is he the one? Because, see, I, I pro, is, do he, cause my wife works at a, at a daycare. Do he drop them off at a daycare? Don't start, you, 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 baby. You is getting deeper. If I get to this, what daycare does your wife work at, baby? Because I see, mm mm, mm mm. Don't start me. Yeah, he's dropping them off. Okay. Uh huh. If you tell me the night, baby, just tell me. The, if baby, I prom, I swear, Lonnie. Now, now she's been at this place called <laughs> Children's Academy. You are for- lie. You better not tell me this non-working <laughs> is with the that's supposed to be watching our kids. See, oh, see, nah. see, I'm already, oh, nah. and see, but see, I'm already upset. I've been upset about this year's for the last, I've been holding it for the last two weeks. I've been holding it. I ain't said nothing till the next. Why the I, you I, holding it? Why are you holding it? Y'all crazy. I, I, why is you holding it? You should have been called me. What? This some Oh, this some because when he get his let me tell you something. I get up at four every morning. And this some I go to, I have to be to work for 630 every Morning, I get to that damn hospital. I slave all day. Then come home and slave for him. Try to make sure he feels good as a man, although he's not working. You know it wasn't his fault he got laid off. But hey, I want him to feel good, although he's not working. Cause you know y'all don't feel too good when you're not working. So I wanted him to feel good. I tell the kids, you know, it's gonna be okay. But I bet you this got that. Wait a minute, see, now, cause that kid. is my wife. Don't be in her. She's my wife. Not. Uh, wait a minute. Now, but wait a minute. See, I told you it was ignorant because, see, you should have been calling me long ago. Let me tell you how you ignorant, too. See, she's a first of all because she said she too up. She said he raised that out of her. She don't know how to play the game. And she with my ass, and he's sending her naked pictures. He ain't got to be showing her no way. Trust me, it ain't worth showing. I was just with him because he was a good man. I guess my is dumb, too. Oh, when I get on this I was going to ask you this here. Cause, this cause, is, don't ask, what the do you want to ask? What can you ask me? You just do, told me this here is with your wife, some named Denise. Yes, that's what I said. And this is the that's watching the twins. Baby, we have twins. Do you hear me? Can I Baby, say something else to you? I don't need you to say a thing. Cause can I, I say you. one more thing? What the do you need to say? This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your husband Gerald. This is so. <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> that got the nerve to be pranking me. He needs to be trying to find a <laughs> job. He don't want. <laughs> this is some. This I'm going to get it when I get home. His non-working. <laughs> Let me tell you, the only thing that saved the situation is because, uh, first of all, I'm a woman, so I, I want more information. But the second thing is, we need the job. His <laughs> don't work. I couldn't leave work. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get his. I got to ask you something, baby. What's the baddest radio show in the land? <laughs> Definitely the Steve Harvey morning show. Let me tell you, I'm going to get you. You know I'm going to get you. You ain't <laughs> <laughs> All right, nephew, thank you. Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have some entertainment and national news for you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, in today's entertainment news, the L.A. County D.A. may file assault charges against Tory Lanez for allegedly shooting Megan the Stallion in the foot as she left the SUV they were riding in together. 
Remember that incident. Um, uh, and afterwards, Tory was only charged with possession of a firearm. And um, today, I think uh, photos were released of her foot where she was shot. Yeah, and, gruesome. Uh, yeah, she had to get yeah. her stitches removed and everything. Pretty scary yeah. looking. Yeah. That's yeah. serious, though. That is you know, very serious. Yeah it, yeah, it didn't shatter any bones or any um, uh, main arter, you know, arteries or veins or anything like that. Whatever you have in your feet, but um, <laughs> hey, <that's not laughs> you don't have main do arteries uh-uh. in your feet, do you? Girl, girl. <laughs> but you got bones veins all sure. in your foot. Oh, whatever you, these you got in your foot. <laughs> you know, bones you know, and veins. Bones, you know, cartilage, muscle tissue, bones, <laughs> tissue you know, and bones, sprained yes. ankles. You know. <laughs> <laughs> they the bullets Bone missed spurs. all of that. Thank God. Mm-hmm. Thank yeah, God. that's what I was trying to say. All yeah. she got shot in was heal me. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just glad that it wasn't more serious than that, for yeah. sure. <laughs> you can't get shot him. in the foot from outside the car. Yeah. yeah. But don't you think he needs to be charged with something, though? I mean, this is that's pretty what serious. They're looking at. Yeah. yeah. They're mulling over it for sure. Yeah. All right, so switching gears now. In political news, this is trending. President Trump is urging his supporters to boycott Goodyear tires, Tommy. Uh, The president tweeted, don't buy Goodyear tires. They announced a ban on MAGA hats. That's why. He is so pissed. That's why he wants people to ban Goodyear tires. So here's an American company. Made in America, everything. Now, you want us to ban them. Yeah, to boycott them. Because they're banning MAGA, MAGA hats. So what kind of vehicles are, are the um, Secret Service cars and all? What kind of tires do they have on those cars? Them run flats, but still. Those they good might be made by Goodyear. Yeah. Boy, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, <laughs> Goodyear, you know, <laughs> they're doing diversity training now. Uh, they've asked their associates to refrain from workplace expression of political campaigning or supporting any candidate. Uh, these are the things that are acceptable. Black Lives Matter, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgen- transgender pride. Unacceptable, <laughs> blue lives matter. All lives matter. MAGA attire, political affiliated slogans or material. That's what he's mad about. That's, what that's he's exactly, mad about. that's yeah, what he tweeted. That's, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what he's mm-hmm. mad about. Don't buy Goodyear tires. So, they announced a ban on MAGA hats. Don't you have so something more important to do? So my son got baseball practice tomorrow. Am I supposed to tell him we can't go to baseball practice because we got Goodyear tires on the truck? <laughs> we just not going to make practice today. Am I supposed to tell him that? Why are you tweeting about this, Mr. Yeah. President? Because you petty. Ooh. That's why. <laughs> But why is he involved in a, a private company's yes, business? Yes, you got right. stuff you need to do. The pandemic, people are dying every single day. A thousand people in this country die every single day right. from coronavirus. And you he up here worried about be good year time. Yes. them for their diversity training. He should be applauding them. We need more of this from more companies. Hey, and absolutely. like you say, Steve, this is an American well, company. Well, he ain't got no long. Vote, please, people, vote. Vote <laughs> 411.org. Yeah, all, vote, an early now. vote. Oh. <laughs> all right, Steve, it is time now for today's Ladies, headlines. gentlemen, Miss Ann Tripp. Thank you very much, everybody, and good morning. Here we go. Well, on the third night of the Democratic Convention last night, it was time for the first black and first Asian-American woman on a national ticket to introduce herself to American voters But before she did, the woman who really won the popular vote in 2016, Hillary Clinton, issued a warning. I wish Donald Trump knew how to be a president because America needs a president right now. This can't be another woulda, coulda, shoulda election. If you vote by mail, request your ballot now and send it back right away. If you vote in person, do it early. Become a poll worker. Most of all, no matter what, vote. Number 44, former President Barack Obama said that number 45 seems more interested in himself than the country. For close to four years now, he has shown no interest in putting in the work, no interest in finding common ground, no interest in using the awesome power of his office to help anyone but himself and his friends, no interest in treating the presidency as anything but one more reality show that he can use to get the attention he craves. 
And Barack Obama said he craves a lot of attention, and that's the problem. And finally, Kamala Harris came to the podium, talked about the Democratic ticket 2020 and what it all really means. Joe will bring us together to build an economy that doesn't leave anyone behind. Joe will bring us together to end this pandemic and make sure that we are prepared for the next one. Joe will bring us together to squarely face and dismantle racial injustice, furthering the work of generations. Years from now, our children will ask us, where were you when the stakes were so high? What was it like? And we will tell them not just how we felt, we will tell them what we did. And now Kamala Harris is officially the vice presidential candidate of the Democratic Party. Now, tonight is the end. That's the finale. The speakers tonight include uh, Jersey Senator Cory Booker, Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms, former South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg, uh, Senator Tammy Baldwin, uh, Tammy Duckworth, uh, Senator Chris Coons, and Kamala Harris and the Biden family and Joe Biden, because tonight is the official launch of the Democratic presidential ticket for 2020. So we're going to following that. By the way, the U.S. Postmaster General Louis DeJoy, a major donor to the Trump campaign, testifying before the Senate tomorrow and the House on Monday, accused of working with the White House to deliberately undermine the Postal Service. Trump has repeatedly claimed without any evidence that mail-in voting leads to fraud. Back to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It was an historic night at the Democratic National Convention for Kamala Harris as she became the first black woman nominated for vice president. Yes, yes Lord. Yes, yes, yes Lord. Ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh, thank check. you. So yes. proud as a black yes. woman, Shirley. Uh-huh. Yes, I, I mean, am. High five, Carla. That's right. Yes. Uh, Our forever president, Barack Obama, delivered his speech from the Museum of the American Revolution in Philadelphia. And he said Donald Trump hasn't grown into the job because he can't. Take a listen. I never expected that my successor would embrace my vision or continue my policies. I did hope, for the sake of our country, that Donald Trump might show some interest in taking the job seriously. That he might come to feel the weight of the office and discover some reverence for the democracy that had been placed in his care. But he never did. For close to four years now, he has shown no interest in putting in the work, no interest in finding common ground, no interest in using the awesome power of his office to help anyone but himself and his friends, no interest in treating the presidency as anything but one more reality show that he can use to get the attention he craves. After listening to President Obama, Last night. Ooh, yes. President Fire. I'm yes. telling you, man, I don't care who you are. You have to come to the conclusion that we absolutely have the wrong person in the White House right now. Come on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. At no point has Donald Trump given a speech that made me feel like, wow, this guy is presidential. And I'm telling you, if you don't think that's important, it is. Because the reputation of America across this country, man, is taking a nosedive because of this guy. Mm -hmm. And he does not represent the Republican Party. He's not a a, a, a McCain, a Romney, a, a Paul Ryan. Some of these guys who are, they're decent people, man. Just because they're conservatives don't make them not. But he is not a decent person. This is what's crazy to me. The Republican Party c- claims to be the party of morality, and you and you supporting a guy who is immoral on so many levels with his wife, with the way he does business, with the way he treats people of color, d- the way he has no regard for religion. I mean, mm. man, I, I don't understand, man how the Republican Party has sat here and just been okay because he claims to mm-hmm. love the policies of the Republican Party, which he mm-hmm. does not uphold. He don't live that life now. So. We got to vote, baby. Yeah, we, we vote, do. Vote 411.org. We don't vote. Dot org. We don't vote. All right, coming up at 34 minutes after the hour, we have a question, Steve, from a listener in New Orleans about yesterday's strawberry letter. That's got it. Right after this. You're listening 
to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, in case you missed it, yesterday's Strawberry Letter subject was he loves to mention his ex-wife. Now, this letter was about a married woman whose husband compares her to his ex-wife. So, Steve, we got a question from Maria in New Orleans. It says, uh, Maria says, I heard the Strawberry Letter about the man that mentions his wife to his ex-wife to his new wife, and I'm having the same problem And my husband's ex-wife calls my house often to discuss their grown child. Recently, my husband told me that he's proud of his ex-wife because she's lost weight and she looks like she did when they first met. He saw her when he went over there to help their 21-year-old son fix his car. His son is grown, so I feel like the ex is still using her son to get my husband's attention. My husband has not set any boundaries with her because he says they've known each other all of their lives, so it's normal for him to be friendly to her. I've had enough. Where do I draw the line? Wow. Mm-hmm. Right where you want the line. Uh-huh. Hmm. Right where you want the line. Go over there again, <laughs> or I'll go with you. There, in the vows in the scripture, there is something that says when you take on the wife, you leave all others and cleave only unto her. Now, you, that would mean friends and, you know, not, not that you can't have friends, but, you know, you don't put them in front of your wife, your family, your mama, your daddy. Right. Your ex should be exactly that, your ex. That's what it is. It's your ex. Now, you can't be ex and current at the same time. (laughs) And you can't have your cake and eat it, too. And she is. So you have the the right. Of course she is. Mm -hmm. And you have the right to say something about that. This this boy is a young man now. Yeah. He's 21. 21. He told her how his ex-wife looked good. Yeah, uh, no, see, uh-uh. That. That was see, you stupid that now. Yeah. <laughs> you just I'm flat out stupid. You fine as it was when we first met. What? Yeah. Wow. wow. I'm proud That's of her. What? She's lost weight and she looks like they did when we first met. Say what? <laughs> Why is she your ex, dog? And we still talking about her like she's a current. You draw the line where you want to. If he don't like the line, let him go over there and make a new line. Yeah. But he going to go over there and find out why they was exes. Mm-hmm. Oh, it don't take long. This is true. Mm. No. This is true. Yeah, we're uh, going to hear I mean, about them a couple weeks from now. We're going to hear yeah. a little bit more. This ain't they going to have a strawberry letter right next and, yeah, yeah, see, see, hey, hey, let me say this. Do you all have a friend mm-hmm. that you kind of fell off with being friends, but y'all ain't break up or nothing. Y'all just... Y'all became distance for whatever, family mm-hmm, life, whatever. Mm-hmm, yeah. And you hang out with them again, mm-hmm. and you discover exactly why you don't miss them. Absolutely. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. 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 Yes. You it's discover right that you've really outgrown them. Exactly. Yes. And and in life, you move <clears throat> on. You know, that's what it's called. You move People on in your life sometimes. for seasons yeah. and change you move is on. Good. You know what I'm saying? You move on. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, she can go over there with her husband if he's going over there to see his son and check out and see what's really going on, too, if she wanted to. But like you said, she could draw the line wherever she wants. You ain't got to do all that. I I don't believe that you should have to run and down and hunt down your mate. No. If you got to run them down and hunt them down, you got to put them mate. That means you don't trust them. That means you don't trust them. (laughs) Yeah, but the mm. child is grown. What's all this chit chat? <laughs> but yeah. this grown child of all. You're call- right. You're calling him all yeah. the time, and he, like she said, yeah. he set no boundaries. Uh uh-uh. uh. Tell she my needs son something- to call me. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 bring the your ex- call over here, and let's fix it. Yeah. yeah. But what the twenty one? But your ex phone? knows exactly what she's doing. Exactly. Oh, she knows exactly. 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 She, women she's ain't smart. stupid. Women, yeah. women know if it was them, how it would make them feel. Right. That's, That's why smart. some of them do what they do right. to get oh, you to feel Lord. exactly oh. how they know how they feel. And why mm-hmm. you think she lost all that weight in the first place? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Made She's sure you came over there to see it. See it. That's yeah. right. Come on now. And trust me, when they got through working on that car, they went in there and ate in that house. He, she <laughs> fed him too. It's a lot Come on. going on. Come it's a lot on, we don't man. know. Come on. All right. All right. Well, coming up right after this, the nephew is here with today's prank phone call right after this. Got your favorite beef tips. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today, and the subject is the country bumpkin is not welcome in my family. The country Uh-oh. bumpkin is not welcome in my family. But right now, the nephew is welcome right here with today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Neff? Shirley, I have Shay Leon, P-H-S. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Leon, P-H-S. Let's go, cat dog. Hello. Thank you for calling. Hello. I'm trying to reach Nicole, please. This is she. Hi. How you doing? Listen, my name is Shay Leon, and I was calling you to see if you had any booth rental in the salon that you work in. I'm sorry. I didn't get your name again. What's your name again? Shay. Shay Leon. I mean, my, my real name is Leon, but my artistic name is Shay Leon. Shay Leon is what they call me. Shay Leon. Okay. Um... Actually, I do have space for another um, person to come in and work. Um, I am in a suite. Um, it's rather small in here, but if you are interested in coming in and working, I would really like to have someone come in and work with me. That would be nice. Can I ask you a question? Um, Go ahead. What's your background? What do you do, actually? Uh, well, actually, I've, I've just moved here to uh, D.C. I was actually living in the uh, Los Angeles area. Okay. And, um, you know, I've been doing hair there for the last probably 15, 20 years I've been doing hair. Uh, definitely licensed. You know, I, I just I moved here, but okay. um, I've been doing hair, hair for quite a long time. I specialize in only doing female hair, and um, you know, just looking to get into D.C. and get back to work. And okay. I really want to um, find a place where I can do some hair, and and you know, it's going to take me a minute to get some clientele built up. But right. you know, I, I know my work is good. Okay. Well, um, I am in a high traffic area, and I think this would um, be a great area for you just coming in from another state, especially from California. Right. Um, right. Is it possible you could come in and take a look and see what you can, you know? I, I'd, I'd, love, I'd love to come in and take a look and see what I, what, you know, the type of work environment you have. And, and right. uh, mm-hmm. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm understanding that there's a lot of people that do hair that have different rooms. Is that how this setup is? Yes, that's how it's set up. However, but you, I do but you have, actually a, have a you actually have yeah. a suite. I do have a suite. Um, it's a double suite, so there is room for another technician. Um, but you know, with it being such close quarters, you know, you gotta gotta kind of get a feel for the person that's gonna come in and work for you. So yeah, right, right, because you're gonna be working real close to each other. I understand. You know, if we kind of meet each other, you know, we can get a feel for each other and see if we can work. Well, it let out. me ask you something. Have you have you had a um, uh, a PHS? Have you worked around a PHS person before? I'm sorry, who? A PHS. Have you worked around? I mean, that, that's that's. Pretty much what I do. Have you worked around a PHS? Uh, I'm not. Before? I'm not familiar with that term. Is that a California term? I don't. What's PHS? PHS is uh, uh, private hair specialist. Have you worked with a private hair specialist before? Um. Well, I would consider myself private, being so I'm in a suite. But uh, where you would be working out in the open with myself, so I don't know how private you would be. Oh no 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 no. You you not you not understand where I'm okay. coming from. I'm I'm a PHS. Okay. Private hair specialist, and what that is is I, I do women's private hair. Like if they want removal from under their arm or their chin, or you know. But most of my work actually resides in the bikini line. Uh, you know, I'm an artist, so I'm known to put your name there. I I can dye it a different color, a mohawk, a, a landing strip. You okay, know, okay. I let can me put, let me I let me let me stop you right there. Um, you did call and say you were a hairstylist. And the last time I checked a hairstylist, they would be style hair, the hair on top of the head. Shay Leon does hair. It does that, doesn't necessarily have to be the hair on the head. I'm just saying I okay, style well, hair. Okay, well, Sierra Leon, Sri Lanka. What's, what's your name again? I'm sorry. Shay Leon. You cannot continue to name? get this wrong. Shay, Shay Leon. Okay, I'm sorry. What was the name your mom gave you? Cause uh, my, Shay... my, my government name is Leon. But it's okay, my name. Leon. Okay, Leon. Leon, Leon. <sighs> Again, this is a suite, and you will be working in the open with myself and my clients who are accustomed to having a professional setting. Um, And I don't think it would be appropriate for you to have someone come in and have a landing strip, an airport, a plane, their baby daddy's name. I don't, I don't, I or whatever you do, that's not what we're about here. Okay, so are you trying to say that you're not open for new ideas? I'm sorry. If you consider that a new idea, then I'm giving you the phone number to someone else because this, this, 
we're not going to do that here. Hey, we're listen. Not having, my, we're not my, having problem, you. my problem is this. I'm we're calling not, you. We're not. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. You called my salon. Where, where did you even get my number from? Why? What made you think that you could call my shop and that this is what we do and you could come here and you could do that? Well, I, I'm thinking that you would be open for something no, new. Well, why something. would you think that I'd be open for that? Who who told you that? What? I mean, you I'm, came not, all I'm, the not way from that, I'm not saying that someone came, told me that. You came all the way from California and you called me. You're not coming to my salon to call your name, anybody else's name, any type of landing strip, any type of initials, okay? This is a professional salon, and we style hair. The hair on the hair. That is what I'm doing, lady. I'm styling hair. Did you, that is what Shaley Hahn does. What part of the hair did you, you, she, head did you I said Shaley Hahn styles hair. That's what Shaley Hahn does. Look. I, you, I'm sick of you. I'm sick of you already. So you know what? This is not even going to work. This is not even going to work. Again, we're not doing that here in my shop. I'm sorry. I hope you can call someone else and maybe they'll accept your craft. I'm you sorry know. that your career would not be successful as, as you would like it to be because you're not open for new ideas. Excuse me. Excuse me. Is looking for my something salon different. is very successful. Thank you. You know what? I'm going to come over there and pass out flyers in front oh, of honey. your shop. Letting them know about Shay Leon and letting them know also that you are not who you really are. When are you coming? Are you coming today? Don't worry about when I'm coming. I know where you are. I'm here right now. Can you come today? Please come. I'm coming today. Please come over here because I'm going to be that outside waiting for your Bring your over here. Bring it. Because you're not about to stand outside in front of my salon and degrade my salon. What you're not going to do is deny Shay Leon. You're not going to deny Shay Leon. Please come over here because you will catch the first thing smoking back to California if you bring your over here. I got one more thing I need to say to you. Are you listening to me? Thing to say to me. Shay Leon has one more thing he needs to say. Are you listening to Shay Leon? What, what, what is it? This is not. You Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your girlfriend, Michonne. What? <laughs> Hello? Oh my, <laughs> oh my God. I'm going to keep your <laughs> and hers. <laughs> I don't know if I do. I, oh, oh, God. <laughs> Hey, baby, I got one more thing I need oh, to Oh, God, what, what else you got to say? What is the baddest radio show in the land? <laughs> the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it. You know, you have there nothing. you go. Yeah. There's it's different so types crazy. of hairstylists. There's, there's no, different but types question, of no, 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 no. What did your mama name you? What is on your birth certificate? That, that's Leon, but I'm shady. Well, Leon, well, Leon, listen, we don't do that over here. <laughs> no, we do not. Boy. Shady Shay Leon. Shady Leon. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, you know, we, we uh, there's a lot of hairstyles. A lot of y'all do hair on the head. You know, Shay Leon. Be quiet. You, be quiet. Be quiet. Well, I'm just saying. Yeah. Shay Leon. You, wanna, we, we, we you ain't put no landing strip over here. <laughs> oh, gosh. You know, we can. You're not we doing can all die, that we, over here. We can die it for you. We, you we're know, not you doing that over here. Might want to relax her. You know, just oh, that's how you. Oh my God! Well, relax, <laughs> relax, and get to relax. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's, 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 it's that. Why did you hire the, him? Oh, this, this is, is so National weird. Radio Day. Girl, this is girl. greatness. What are you, you talking? Have this is greatness. Any idea how many times I've kicked myself for that decision? <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea oh, the sleepless your nights. <laughs> I don't know how you think of this. Unwrinkle stuff. your face. I don't know how you think. Untwist twist your lips. <laughs> <laughs> that is, baby Shay Leon. That's a nephew giving it to you right here on this beautiful Thursday morning. His name Shay Leon. You know, and if you're looking <laughs> for a cannot be in the same book of life, mine is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, nephew, thank you. Coming up next, the today's strawberry letter, the subject, the country bumpkin is not welcome in my family. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for today's strawberry letter. And if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your strawberry letter to steveharveyfm.com and click submit strawberry letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. Buckle up. Hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the strawberry letter. 
Thank you, nephew. Subject, the country bumpkin is not welcome in my family. Dear Stephen Shirley, I need your advice because my daughter is in love with a country bumpkin. She is 24 years old and she got engaged recently and she brought her fiance to town to meet my husband and I. As soon as they got out of the pickup truck, I thought, WTH is this? He is a true country bumpkin. He has his GED because he dropped out of high school to work on his family's farm. My daughter has a master's degree and a promising career. The fact that her fiance is white has no bearing on how I feel about him. She could do so much better than this. My husband says farmers can make a lot of money, but I don't want country grandbabies. They stayed with us for a weekend, and this young man has no real interest in politics, the pandemic, or Black Lives Matter. He doesn't watch much TV, and he hasn't been to the movies in years. He's isolated himself on the farm working with animals. They met at a farmer's market, and my daughter said it was basically (laughs) love at first sight. I noticed she's not on her phone as much as she used to be, and she said she's deleted her social media accounts because it's too much to, to keep up with. In some ways, this young man has grounded her, but... He's stifling her in so many other ways. My daughter said his family was very welcoming, and they say she's book smart and nicknamed her professor. My husband and my sister said I'm uppity and being too judgmental. I want the best for my daughter, and he is not it. I encouraged her to have a long engagement, but the wedding date is set for next fall. I know she can do better than this, and I'm trying to get her to see that. Isn't that a parent's job? Would I be wrong if I didn't give her my blessing to marry him? Okay, no, you wouldn't be wrong, but I have to tell you that they don't need your blessing to get married if that's really what they want to do. Uh, and I'm really trying to figure out what's so wrong with this guy. I mean, is it just the fact that he's from the country? Or, or do you think he's not good enough or smart enough or rich enough? You, 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 you don't like this guy. Let, let's go down the list. They met at a farmer's market, you said. He has a pickup truck. Seems like you had a problem with that. He has a GE. Uh, He hasn't been to the movies. He's not into politics or the pandemic or Black Lives Matter. He doesn't watch TV, and he's been isolated on the farm working with the animals. Your daughter, meanwhile, is well-educated. She has a master's degree and a promising career. Uh, And his family says she's got book smarts, and they all call her professor. They've been very welcoming to her, you said. Oh, and the big one, your daughter is black and he's white. But you say that doesn't matter to you. What about love? Love. I, I don't see any mention of love on here. Do they love each other? Do they? Um, because if they love each other, you know, again, your blessing is not going to matter in this. So, and please don't say you don't want any country grandkids uh, to them. Please don't say that because that will be a turnoff to your daughter. Um, you know, I've seen all kinds of marriages work. Marriages that people never believed would. And then marriages where you go, no, they broke up. I thought they would be together till death. I I mean, the main problem I'm going to tell you that I see in this letter is that he doesn't know about the pandemic and Black Lives Matter and all of that. He doesn't know what's going on in the world. And that's probably because, like you say, he's been on the farm and he doesn't watch a lot of TV. Your daughter really needs to discuss these things with him. That's what they need to be talking about right now. Uh, See how he feels about all this stuff for real, because this is going to matter in a marriage in spite of their differences. uh, You know, sometimes opposite said to do a track. You've got to let them figure this out, though. You've got to stay out of it. Let them figure it out, not you. Steve? This country bumpkin ain't welcome in my family. (laughs) The first lie in the letter that she told is the fact that her fiancé is white has no bearing on how I feel about him. I don't believe that. That's why you're referring to him as a country bumpkin. Now, you know, do how you want. You can want the best for your kids. But does every parent know what's best for their children all the time? Nope. No, they don't. No, they don't. Parents make mistakes too now. She's 24 years old, got engaged, 
Wait until she got engaged, brought him home to meet y'all. You was upset soon as they got out the pickup truck. That's what you didn't like. I thought, what the hell is this? He is a true country bunkie. He got a GED because he dropped out of high school to work on his family farm. Okay. My daughter has a master's degree in a promising career. In what? So what she got a master's degree? So? And he got a GED. Now I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. She could do much better than this. If she could, she would. Mm. See? If your daughter qualifies for so much better, she'd have so much better. There's some things you may not know about your daughter. Then your husband told you farmers can make a lot of money. That ain't ain't true, but (laughs) some do. (laughs) But he going to have to have one monster of a farm now. And I I ain't mad. But either way, he's a hardworking man. Mm -hmm. I'm really pissed off at the letter because it sounds like it's about me. (laughs) I knew it. I was wondering if you were going to get to that Let's just stop this foolishness. (laughs) We're going to have part two of Steve's response. Too damn response. country for who? We'll get back into it at 23 minutes after, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, come on, recap the letter that you think is about you. The Damn country bunkin' think. is not welcome in my family. Let's go. Heard this before. <laughs> Sitting up working on a farm. Your daughter got a master's degree and a promising career. Promises? I'm out here pulling these tomatoes. <laughs> Got a truck full of cucumbers. What's promising, more promising than that? If I don't sell it, we can eat it. <laughs> Cucumber salad is delicious. All right. My husband says farmers can make a lot of money, but I don't want a country bunking grandbaby. Well, then that's what they're going to have. <laughs> She so you ain't going to want the grandbaby? She can't they stay that. with us for a weekend, and this young man has no real interest in politics. I, I ain't mad at him for that. The coronavirus, he, he ain't got it. <laughs> Hard to get corona out on the phone. <laughs> You're in the middle of the field working by yourself. He's social distancing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All black lives matter. Didn't you say he was white? <laughs> Did not you say he was white? <laughs> now you want him to get a T-shirt on. Mm-hmm. He ain't finna do that. He's isolated himself on the farm working with animals. Maybe he don't like a lot of people. Mm. But your daughter loves him. Yeah. I know that she's not on her phone as much as she used to be. And, uh, she says she's deleted her social media account because it's too much to keep up with in some way. This young man has grounded her. Mm-hmm. Right there. I see an improvement in your daughter. But he's uh, stifling her in so many other ways. Like what? She didn't say. <laughs> like what? What? Mm-hmm. Now, my sad. daughter says his family very welcoming. And they say she book smart. She got a master's and he got a GED. Hell yeah, she book smart. <laughs> they call her professor. Hell yeah. A master's? <laughs> We GED people. <laughs> got no time for high school. Oh my goodness. Going down there graduating. I got to go out here, pull these tomatoes. <laughs> I ain't going to tell you no more we got to shuck this coin. <laughs> we peace snapping people. <laughs> <laughs> we in here, we slopping hogs. So why do you think this letter is about you, Steve? Because I'm country. <laughs> I didn't heard this before. Oh, okay. You are that? Huh? You are that? <laughs> That's Yeah, I'm is. that. Who told you that? No. Oh, don't. Oh, I don't, we don't want to get into <laughs> that. <laughs> oh. My husband and my sister say I'm up in it and I'm being too judgmental. You are. Mm-hmm. I want the best for my daughter and he is not it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't know that. I encourage her to have a long engagement, blah, 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 blah. I'm not trying to, you know, get her to see that and all this. 
isn't that a parent's job? Would I be wrong if I didn't give her my blessing to marry him? You ain't got, they don't need it. Shirley they said they it. don't need it. But you do know that he don't have to ask you for a blessing, that he has to come to the father and ask for the daughter's hand in marriage. And you do know that the father is supposed to pay for the wedding of the bride. You do know. Let me ask you a question. How does he treat her? Probably like a queen. The biggest problem in this letter is the person that wrote the letter. You don't like the dude because he got a GED. Well, let's go over a couple of people that don't have master degrees like your daughter. Ready? Yeah. Tiger Woods don't have a master's degree. Tyler Perry don't have a master's degree. PP, are you with? Jamie Foxx don't have a master's degree. I'm gonna make her do what they're doing. There's a president. I promise you, this boy is in the White House. <laughs> if he do have a master's degree, he bought all the tests. <laughs> His daddy Scandal. bought it for him. <laughs> yes. I can go down the list of extremely successful people who don't have a master's degree. That if they that if they was dating your daughter, you wouldn't have a problem with it. The GED ain't what you 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 bothered by the GED? Really? I could tell you a lot of hugely successful people that don't have that. The biggest problem in this letter is you. I think you're prejudiced. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say it. It's yeah. Strawberry Letter. She ain't here to defend herself. I can say anything. <laughs> yeah, even though she says she's not, Steve. You're right. Oh, I, I, hell, you know how much stuff I said I wasn't going to do and turn around and did it? Mm-hmm. Mm. You know how many lies I done told? Right. Uh, <laughs> anybody yourself. To your face. <laughs> wow. Didn't blink. Have you ever told a person you was in love with them and you really weren't? Man. Because I was hungry. Boy. Wait, what? Because he was hungry. Get a good, meal. And that's a good God. reason. Man. I met a girl while I was homeless and she like had that. an apartment. As uh-huh. soon as I found out she had an apartment, the next words out of my What'd mouth was, I love you. <laughs> Immediately. You With all my heart, <laughs> heart and soul. All right, Steve, thank you. You're right. The biggest problem is the mom. (laughs) Post your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM on Instagram and Facebook. And please check out the Strawberry Letter podcast. It's on demand. Now, coming up at 46 minutes after the hour, it is our girl from the talk, Cheryl Underwood. Right after this. I cry. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen. Hey. Without further ado, Cheryl mm-hmm. Underwood. That's what I'm talking about, Steve Harvey. That's what I'm talking about. This, the foolishness. Well, okay, we're not going to stop all the foolishness. We just pause <laughs> the foolishness. <laughs> yeah. Because was anybody watching last night? Sorry. Yes. Yes, yes. yes we yes. did. Woo, yes. Did you see President Obama? Yes, mm. he girl. Was not Nailed it. it. Yes. Na- listen. Listen. <laughs> but listen. Did you see- did you see when Kamala Harris said there's no vaccine for racism? I went, damn! That girl know what she's talking about right there. <laughs> what you say, Cheryl? I said, damn, that girl know what she's talking about right there. I got to go to the polls. <laughs> Listen to me. I know this is going to be a smackdown of an election because yes, when is. LeBron James, mm. LeBron James said he going to get people to vote because he need black people to understand they've been lied to about the rights that they had that they didn't use. But you know what? This is what I want to talk about. All the young people that like to call me Auntie Cheryl and mm-hmm. like to call Uncle Steve and everything, we need your vote. We need, yeah. When the first lady, Michelle Obama, said we can't be withholding our vote and we can't be wasting our vote on somebody that don't have a chance to win. She was talking about Kanye. Don't nobody need to say nothing about that. We were talking about Kanye. They are playing with your minds. And right now, I want young people to know how much power they have. Black Lives Matter. 
has caused change to occur in this country. But you've got to keep going. You've got to secure the change with the vote. And, and that's why I'm begging yeah. the DNC to buy ads on black radio. Why? PPM gives us three to five minutes to engage you. We are the soundtrack of your life because you listen to radio in your house, in your car, on your jobs. But we need you to back up what we saying with the advertisement. You must oh, speak to us. These young people, they the ones started the cancel culture. Then I need you to cancel Trump in November. I need you Woo. to remember in November that we gonna cancel Trump. I need you to make voting viral. I need you to trend in everything that we need to do to fight for freedom, justice, and equality. If you're young, gifted, and black, I need you to be loud, united, and engaged. And Ooh. what does that mm. mean? I need Come you to go on, blue. For the soul of the nation, we must take souls to the polls. We must turn up the turnout. We will go blue. And when I say blue, that's B-L-U-E. Be loud, united, and engaged. Go blue, because we <laughs> are about to turn the House, the Senate, and the White House blue. We taking yes. it back. Come we taking it show. back. Let's go blue. Go on, Be girl. loud, united, and engaged. Black Radio Solidarity. We need to drive souls to the polls. Vote411.org for all your information. Vote and vote early. Everybody, right. vote yes. early. We're going to let you know That's the right. day you can start voting early. we going That's to right. the polls in record mm-hmm. numbers. More of Cheryl when we come back at the top of the hour right after this. Hey, Junior. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, we're back with the one and only Cheryl Underwood. Cheryl, you were saying. (laughs) Well, listen, listen. I want young people to know that we were young. Steve, remember uh, Tommy, Junior, Mm. Carla, Shirley? We was the hip-hop generation that grew Mm -hmm. up to elect President Obama. Do you know how young Fred Hampton was before they assassinated him? Do you know how young John Lewis? Do you know that from the Freedom Riders and the marches in the 60s, that brought in the mayors of the 70s. Do you know how young Marion Barry was? Do you know how young Call Me Young and all those mayors coming in? Do you know really how young Shirley Chisholm was? You need to understand. We need you young people. And we don't want y'all to just be finger popping and be bopping. And we're not trying to be old people that say, well, if y'all don't do this, this going to happen. You can see how bad it's gotten. What do we got to lose? Everything. If Trump gets four more years, he will solidify the destruction of this democracy. That's why I'm begging you to go blue. Be loud, united, and engaged in this election. You've already started it with Black Lives Matter. You've already started it with the marching. Now we must take it further. We've got to go further. What do y'all want to say? How can how can we get the young people to see what we need to do? You know, do we need to get, where's Killer Mike? Where's T.I.? Uh, 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 Cardi B? I don't care. It's okay to do uh, what are the WAP videos. That was all my comedy when I started comedy in the 70s and the 80s. <laughs> well, I, ain't uh-huh. I'm just, I ain't gonna lie to you. That's why I can't criticize the young girls out here. But, but what I can say is, you guys got millions of followers on social media. There's a responsibility to that. There's an expectation to that. When we was growing up, we had MC Light, Queen Latifah, Roxanne. We need the young people to understand, you're not always gonna be young. Your children are gonna grow up. What what kind of world do you want for them? What That's kind of right, world do you Because you That's got right. it all right now. But if they take your rights and your freedom from you, they don't know who you are when you're driving in your car. You get what I'm saying to you? Oh, so yes. what I'm saying to the young people is, they hear us on the radio, they look up, look us up from Deaf Comedy Jam, Comic View, and everything that we've done. Let's be about something. Let's make sure that we vote. If we had 10 million extra votes, Trump will know you are out of my house. And don't let them distract us and pit us against each other. Our Mm. brown brothers and sisters, our progressive brothers and sisters need to understand it's not about this convention right now. It's what we do after the convention. Mm -hmm. We've got to put this dude out of office. We must stand up for our brown brothers and sisters because once they finish with us, whoever's left, they're going to go after. So we mm-hmm. need to stand together. Anybody want to co-sign on anything I have said, I'm just asking all you to go blue. Please be loud, 
united and engaged. Be loud, united, and engaged. You like that Go Blue? You like that Shirley Scrabble? Yes, I do. Everything like except Hey Junior. I got all that. Everything except Oh, what? Hey what? Junior. Wait a minute. I have to listen to me. Me and Junior going to be together. Uh, like you know, who was the who was the dynamic black couples in the civil rights movement? Uh, Martin and Coretta, that's me and Junior yep. right yeah. there. Me and Junior what? right there. <laughs> what? Yeah. For, it's a, it's what? It's a love that can stand the test of time. I swear to God, I fight a dog if it tried to bite Juniors. <laughs> you gonna take Junior? You gonna take Junior to the polls with you? It's gonna be a loving stroll. It's gonna we gonna go together. We gonna go get something to eat. And we're going to vote and we'll do what we got to fill out our ballots together. But while I'm saying it, I think that's the best way to get these young men to go to the polls. There used to be a Greek a tragedy yeah, a that date. was about, that's right, a date. It used to be, okay, so we're going to start withholding stuff from you fellas if you are not registered to vote, if you okay. are not going to the poll. We going on strike. We going to keep that WAP to ourselves until y'all go blue. How about that, ladies? <laughs> right, right, we going right, to keep that WAP to ourselves. <laughs> That's right. You ain't voting. No WAP for you. No we WAP for you. We will nah. see you at the poll. Nah. Thank you, Cheryl. Nah. We Shirley Strawberry, that. I need you to sleep outside. Ernesto. Gonna be looking at you. Make sure Ernesto is ready to vote. He is. Sure he is. is. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Cheryl. Coming up next, uh, today's trending stories on the Steve Harvey Morning Show. We'll be back in 20 minutes after the hour. Right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, we said it at the top of the show. Today is National Radio Day. We're all in radio, have been in yes. it for years. We love our radio. <laughs> we love yeah. radio. Yeah. <laughs> Man. We love it, yeah. We want to thank all of our loyal listeners, too, that have been with us, Steve, on the Steve Harvey Morning Show for almost 20 years, right? This yeah. show 16. was 2005. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay, on, what, yeah. 16, That's right. 15, and then you started in 15, LA. In how much we had before that? In LA at uh, 2000, so five. You know, Tommy, you or, missed a lot of days on that show. It's all a blur. <laughs> so you yeah, told me I'm still a kind of, part of that. Stop yeah, it. you were part of it, but you missed a lot of days back then. Yeah. But I was there most of the time. Steve, most what do you love time. about radio, though? I think the theater of the mind portion of it. Mm -hmm. I think it's the one platform that I get to be more sincerely who I really am. Uh, I, I can give more of my personalized thoughts. I don't have shows where I can just give all my personalized views on it like I can radio. And I just really believe that we're in a position that we can affect change. Mm -hmm. I think our voices on this radio show can affect change can move the direction. I am thoroughly convinced that if we convince black people to vote, that we will show that black lives matter and will make them look at us in a totally different way. Because if we now can determine whether you have a job or not, they're going to pay real close attention to whether black lives matter or not. That's right. Thank you, Steve. We'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show and some trending news coming up at 33 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, in case you missed it, yesterday's Strawberry Letter subject was he loves to mention his ex-wife. Now, this letter was about a married woman whose husband compares her to his ex-wife. So, Steve, we got a question from Maria in New Orleans. It says, uh, Maria says, I heard the Strawberry Letter about the man that mentions his wife to his ex-wife to his new wife and I'm having the same problem and my husband's ex-wife calls my house often to discuss their grown child. Recently my husband told me that he's proud of his ex-wife because she's lost weight and she looks like she did when they first met. He saw her when he went over there to help their 21 year old son fix his car. His son is grown so I feel like the ex is still using her son to get my husband's attention. My husband has not set any boundaries with her because he says they've known each other all of their lives so it's normal for him to be friendly to her i've had enough where do i draw the line wow. mm -mm 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 -mm. right where you want the line uh -huh. hmm. right where you want the line go over there again in the scripture there's something that says when you take on the wife you leave all others and cleave only unto her now that would mean friends and, you know, not not that you can't have friends, but, you know, you don't put them in front of your wife, your family, your mama, your daddy. 
Right. Your ex should be exactly that. Your ex. That's what it is. It's your ex. Now, you can't be ex and current at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't have your cake and eat it, too. And she is. She so is you have the, the right. <laughs> of course she is. Mm. And you have the right to say something about that. This this boy is a young man now. Yeah. He's 21. 21. He told her how his ex-wife looked good. Yeah, no, see, uh-uh. That. That was see, crazy. you stupid now. Yeah. <laughs> you just I'm flat out stupid. You fine as it was when we first met. What? Yeah. Wow. wow. I'm proud it's of her. What? She's yeah. lost weight and she looks like they did when we first met. Say what? Why is she your ex, dog? And we still talking about her like she's a current. Mm. You draw the line where you want to. If he don't like the line, let him go over there and make a new line. Yeah. But he going to go over there and find out why they was exes. Mm-hmm. Oh, it don't take long. Yeah, we're uh, going to hear I mean, about them. Do you all have a friend mm-hmm. that you kind of fell off with being friends, but y'all ain't break up or nothing. Y'all just... Y'all became distance for whatever, family mm-hmm. life, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you hang out with them again, mm-hmm. and you discover exactly why you don't miss them. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes. Coming up, our last break of the day. It's the last break of the day. <laughs> and we'll have <laughs> some stirring uh, closing remarks from the one and the only Steve Harvey at 49 minutes after, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Here we go. Last break of the day. Wow. T- 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 tonight will be the last night of the DNC. And uh, did Joe it Biden. last night. They so did that. Oh, yeah, they did. Yes, they it did. was outstanding. Did. Yes. I got yes. chills when Kamala Harris... Uh-huh. Oh, I just, just accepted so happy. the nomination yeah. for vice president. Right. Oh, oh, proud oh, moment, oh, a very yes. proud moment. And it we got to keep it going woman. and yeah. make sure they get in uh, November 3rd. Yes. Uh, and then That's there was right. President Barack Obama who nailed it as always <laughs> last yes. night. Yeah. 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 And he then kept it 100. Yeah. You know, he really he kept did. it presidential is what yes, he, he did. did. And that's, and what that's exactly appreciate. what <laughs> is pushing my closing remarks because last night when I was listening to President Obama talk, it it dawned on me and it was such a stark contrast to what we've been hearing for the past four years from the current person who holds the office. How convinced I am more than ever that the wrong person is there. Of course, I didn't need to hear from uh, Barack Obama last night to know that we have the wrong president, but to see what a president really is supposed to sound like, to watching his eloquence of speech, his use of the language, his vocabulary, uh, his his willing to heal, to say something to make people feel better. Donald Trump says nothing to make people feel better. It is amazing, man, how his supporters are. Rush Limbaugh, who quotes these uh, things that's negative about uh, Kamala Harris. And I'm not going to sit here and let him fire away on his radio show. And I don't fire back on my radio show. I am coming to the rescue, to the aid, and to the defense of women. You know, man, I get sick of people who feel as though they can do women any kind of way. And because this woman happens to be black, do you know on Amazon, Amazon Amazon need to watch they step too. They are selling a shirt that's under the title of Trump 2020 Shirts by Kevin. Joe and the Ho vote no 2020. Now, see, you've gone too far. You've gone entirely too far. You are calling a woman who is running from the vice, who is running to be vice president of the United States, the second highest office in the land, and you have a T-shirt out referring to her as a hoe? No, nah, man. No. Nah. Not on my watch. Kevin, Rush Limbaugh, and anybody else. It ain't right, man. 
it just ain't right. You claim to be such a moral party, but you are willing to participate in any immoral act that this man allows you and does on his watch. I, I ain't with it, man. You know what, man? I got that everybody makes mistakes. But when, you, when, but when there's no repentance for your mistakes, when you're willing to just do what you want to do and say what you want to do, you ain't ever got the capacity to say, I'm sorry. There's no remorse in your actions. You're paying off porno stars. you got Playboy bunnies in your house. All your friends you bought are going to jail. You're pardoning criminals. You're jumping over and controlling the Department of Justice. You're closing down mailboxes in Democratic precincts. You do whatever you want to do. And you're supposed to be the moral party. Are you serious, man? And this T-shirt has really, really pissed me off. See, I'm curious as to if you, you, you didn't call Stormy McDaniels a hoe. You didn't call the Playboy Bunny touring the Trump house with Melania. You didn't call her a hoe. But now this woman runs for vice president. All of a sudden, the term hoe comes up. Is this real life, man? Are you kidding me? And you can't help but make me think it's because she black. Well, let me tell you what she really is. She's highly educated. She's incredibly well-spoken. She's dignified. She's classy. And on top of all that, she's black. That's why you got the problem. That's really why you got the problem. Sometimes, man, y'all racism, man, you can't even tuck it away. You can't hide it for just a minute. We already got the T-shirts. Are you serious, man, Amazon? You got the nerve to be selling this? You know this ain't right. Take this off your platform, Amazon. We spend too much money to sit back and let you degrade this woman like that. If you don't like her policy, that's one thing. But you're not going to call this sister no ho. That ain't what it is. Her name is Kamala Harris. Guess what? She's running for vice president of the United States of America. That's what she is. And you're going to play with us and we're going to show you something, how serious black lives really do matter, because we're going to get her in the White House. What's she going to be then? You can say what you want to say, but she's going to end up in the White House in spite of you because of all the things you've done to us. We've survived it all. We're going to get this one, too. But we're going to show you something in November. Mr. Trump and the evil side of his supporters. There's some great Republicans in this country. But the dude that wrote this shirt ain't one of them. And the dude that perpetrates it on his radio show, he ain't another one, too. Now, you can call me what you want to call me. But you're going to refer to that sister in more respectful terms. Because she's running for the second highest office in the land. Her name is Kamala Harris. And we're going to do our part. And I'm going to show you how much black lives matter. Because all these damn votes going to matter in a minute. You're going to see. Well, I pr- promise you that. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 